What's good, my brothers? Welcome back to Pro Down Theology. It's all about God for the bros. Now, this is episode four on Paul the Apostle. If you missed the first episodes, they're linked below. And this week, we're talking about the most theologically important moment in church history. You would probably not be following Jesus were not for what we're gonna talk about today. And I promise you, some people are gonna get offended by this episode. But guess what? It's in the Bible, the Bible talks about it, and if you get offended, get mad at the Bible. This week, we're talking about the bedrock theological decision of the church. So Paul and Barnabas head back to Jerusalem, the seat of power for the Jews and the church to talk about all that God has done. Now here's the thing. You remember when God told the apostles to start reaching out to the non-Jews? It was like Harley riders becoming rock rocket riders. And they all knew that that sounds cool, but when they asked for volunteers, like, hey, who wants to trade in their super glides for a high boosa? There are crickets. <coughs> Nobody wanted to do that. See, there's a lot of tradition and culture when it comes to Harley riding. And for the Jews, there's a lot of culture and tradition too. Now, bros listen to Bro Down Theology. I gotta give you a bit of a warning. This next part is a little bit sensitive because it involves something that's, well, it's really important to us, bro. Some might call it the most tender and important and sensitive part of being a man. And I don't want to make anybody cry or bother or die or be triggered, but I'm just going to read what the Bible says. Next 15, verse 1, it says, While Paul and Barnabas were at Antioch of Syria, some men from Judea arrived, began to teach believers, unless you are circumcised, as required by the law of Moses, you cannot be saved. You're going to hell. For the Jews, to show that you were part of God's family, to show that you were willing to submit all of yourself, I mean all of yourself, to God, you had to get circumcised. You're talking about this? Which, you know, was a part of their culture and custom and deal and covenant with God. And if you were a male child, this happened on your eighth day of life. What? Fortunately, thank God, no one would remember it on the eighth day of life. Now, if you converted to Judaism, it happened as an adult without anesthesia, sometimes with a dirty, dull, stone plate. And as an adult, you would remember it. But thank God for Paul and Barnabas. And this is why I love Paul. He's so great, okay? It says, Paul and Barnabas disagreed with them, arguing vehemently. Finally, the church decided to send Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem, accompanied by some local believers to talk to the apostles and elders about this question, this important question. Paul was like, hey guys, because of Jesus, we don't have to do that anymore. Because he created a new deal, a new covenant, and a new contract with us. So all new Christian men, they don't have to get circumcised. But there was a bunch of Jews who were like, wait a minute. If we had to do that to our doctors, these new guys should have to do it to their doctors. That was literally the argument. Suddenly, a lot of guys who were thinking about following Jesus were like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought it was by grace through faith in Christ. You mean I have to do what to be a Christian? What? You want me to give up my cobra? My hoodie? No, 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 no. No! And they all start yelling, arguing, and spitting. As you could imagine, these things got pretty heated. People were passionate about this. It was the first ever real church argument. So they literally decide to have a church conference meeting. And they all travel down to Jerusalem on camels, on Range Rovers, on their lawnmowers. And they all run out this conference center at the Holiday Inn in Jerusalem. And the center thing that they were deciding was do men what? have to be circumcised to become a Christian? Basically, do they have to become Harley riders? Now, I know a lot of us bros don't really care that much about church meetings and Quiet, arguments please. and politics. We just want to go fishing. We don't really watch the news. But if a church meeting's happening, for most of us, we don't care. But I promise you, this church meeting, all the guys cared a lot. A lot! They're sitting on the edge of their seats. I mean, the Bible doesn't specifically mention it, but I'm sure at that conference, you know, at the center, at the Holiday Inn, it was surrounded by a bunch of new Christian men praying all day, all night. I mean, normally you're not gonna get a bunch of bros to fast and sing worship songs, but they were here like, Jesus, please take the wheel. Please help. All the news networks, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, helicopters circling. All the second-rate doctors, they're sitting there sharpening their knives, you know, their stone knives, getting their biting bullets ready for these guys to do these surgeries. Don't touch me, I'm sterile. And inside the meeting hall, the debate begins. It says, when they arrived in Jerusalem, Barnabas and Paul were welcomed by the whole church, including all the apostles and the elders. And they reported everything God had done through them. But then some of the believers who belonged to the sect of Pharisees stood up and insisted the Gentile converts must be circumcised is required to follow the law of Moses. Seriously, this meeting, if it goes poorly, I don't think Christianity would be made up of men today. I think it would be only women. I mean, ladies have a tough time getting their non-Christian men to come to church as it is, but can you imagine, hey honey, 
I want you to come to church with me. And their man be like, no, please, no, I don't want to go through that. And everyone's praying, waiting. Then finally, after a long discussion, the Bible says Peter stood and addressed them as follows. Brothers, God knows people's hearts. And he confirmed that he accepts Gentiles, those crotch rocket riding non-Jewish people, by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. He made no distinction between them and us, for he has cleansed their hearts through faith. So why are you now challenging God by burdening the Gentiles with a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors were able to bear? We believe that we are all saved the same way by the undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus. It's not yes. about circumcision. It's not about race. We're all one in Jesus. And I want you to know, all the new Christian men who were not born Jewish went wild. This is establishing a new faith. You remember that scene in Braveheart where Mel Gibson inspires everybody, faces painted blue, riding on his war horse, saying, they may take our lives, but they will never take our freedom. And the crowd goes wild, complete bedlam. I mean, theologically speaking, this is the most important moment of the early church. The whole book of Hebrews, the whole book of Romans essentially focus on this issue that was decided in this moment. This is when they officially decided that Christianity was a new thing, a new deal, a new covenant. They were no longer Jewish. Christianity was their identity. We are saved by the grace of our Lord Jesus. We're no longer saved by an elaborate set of rules signified through circumcision. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ. It's the foundation of our religion. It's the linchpin of the Bible. This is such a critical moment for you to understand. Cannot overstate. And Paul is finally set free to share about Jesus with the non-Jews without the burden of the Harley-Ridden Jewish traditions. And he goes for it. But that's a story for next week.